So Farrell was asking about motivation. So I think, Farrell, that's a fantastic question. So I'll tell you guys, I, I kind of have two uh, two big approaches to like my own personal motivation. So the first is to remember that if you have an outcome orientation, your motivation is towards the outcome. It's towards the goal. And the problem is that if the outcome isn't what you want, your motivation is going to go with it, right? So if like my goal on a test if my goal is to get an A on a test and I get an A, then I'm okay until the next test. But the problem is that if I ever get a B, like my motivation, it's it, it's kind of like building a house of cards. And I see this a lot actually in, in, you know, when I work with medical students is a lot of like medical students have been at the top of their class forever. Like they were, they were like at the top of their class in high school, got into good colleges or at the top of their class in college. So they like get into a good med school. And, um, I mean, we see, we work with a lot of students, but, you know, I, I, most of them are from Harvard. And, and so they're very, they really struggle when, cause they've been like at the top of everything. So they really struggle when they become average. And so anytime that you have an outcome oriented motivation, I feel like it's kind of like riding a wave that's going to crash at some point. And so what I really try to do is focus on actions instead of outcomes and just kind of stick with the action. The other huge thing, if we think about, um, the other thing that I talk a lot about is, is dharma, and that's a big part of my motivation. So dharma is a Sanskrit word that means duty or responsibility. And in the Eastern religions, they don't really have kind of the standard idea of morality in terms of like good and evil. They talk about like living in service to your dharma or not living in service to your dharma. And I think a huge uh, advantage of living in service to your dharma, and I'll explain what this means, is that it gives you a lot of tolerance for suffering and, and failure. So I'll give you guys just an example. So let's say that I'm walking down the street and like someone points a gun at me. So when I look at that gun, that gun represents a lot of things like fear, pain, death. And those are all things that I'm going to want to retreat from, right? Like the gun represents everything that I don't like in this world. And I'm just trying to run away from it as quickly as possible. So the gun represents a lot of suffering. So our instinct as human beings is to move away from negative emotions and from suffering. And if we think a lot about what Farrell was talking about, you know, she was encountering a lot of like negativity at different points in her life. And her response was to protect her ego was to kind of like move away from that prospect of failure. And then she ends up kind of becoming stuck. So that's sort of, that's how human beings respond, right? Like if someone points a gun at me, like I'm going to try to run away or get out of that situation however I can. Like if the dude wants my wallet, I'm going to give him the wallet. And I'm going to hope that he just leaves me alone. Now, the funny thing about that is that, so that's completely like understandable. So now let's say that I'm walking down the street with my kid and someone points a gun at my kid. Then what am I doing? Suddenly I'm stepping into the path of the gun. Right? So the, the gun means no less death or pain or suffering, but my capacity to face that suffering and even step into it, like choose that suffering, is because I'm living in service to my dharma. So my first duty or my responsibility is to my daughter. So because I'm living in service to that, I can actually tolerate immense amounts of suffering and negativity and kind of come out hopefully on the other side. And if I get shot, I get shot. But dharma is what lets me choose the hard path because I'm doing it for a reason. I'm doing it in service to my dharma. So when I talk to, to gamers about sort of figuring out what their motivation is, like they all talk about like wanting to change, but for what? Like they don't have a reason. They're like, yeah, I want to, you know, I want to graduate from college. Why? So that I can get a good job. Why? Like, I don't know. So I can be happy. Like, what does having a good job have to like it's all it's all answers that they kind of it's like hypothetical answers right like it's like no one really knows like you can't at so they're like okay so i can get married and have kids one day you don't understand the value of being like married to a good person and having kids until you've actually done it so a big part uh of of what i try to help gamers do is like discover their dharma because dharma is what lets you tolerate the difficulty like when I was in, in residency and you, know, you do like 24 or like 30 hour call shifts, like there were two attitudes for my colleagues. One is I just have to get through it, right? And we heard that from Farrell today. It was all like, I just have to get through this period until I get partnership. It's like, it, I just have to get through it. That's actually not a sustainable way to live your life. That's going to lead to something called burnout.
right? Like you're going to, you're going to dig deep and you're going to get through it and you're going to get through it. You're going to get through it. And then you end up burnt out. Like you just don't have any energy anymore. Your gas tank is empty. So the other thing is that I realized when I was on call, like in the ICU that I'm going to be a psychiatrist. And, you know, one day, like th this is honestly the thought that I had. I'm going to be on a plane like 10 years from now and someone's, they're going to like, someone's going to ring the overhead speaker and they're going to say, is there a doctor on the plane? And then I'm a fucking psychiatrist, but I can't say no. And then like, I'm going to, I'm going to hit the button, right? So the, the, the flight attendant is going to come grab me and then I'm going to go see this dude who's like, is maybe having a heart attack. And then I have to know what to do in that point. Like in that moment, depending on who I've become, either I'm going to be able to save that person's life or not save that person's life. And so that's my dharma in that moment is like, that's going to be my responsibility, right? I'm, I'm the doctor on the plane. I can't tell them, yeah, man, I'm sorry. I can't tell if you, you're having a heart attack or not. I'm a psychiatrist and I mostly talk to people about their feelings. Like that doesn't work. And so when I'm in the ICU and I'm on my call shifts, I think to myself, this is the one year of my life that I'm going to get to be in this ICU and I better learn whatever I can because at some point, if somebody needs my help, like, am I going to be able to help them or am I not going to be able to help them? That's my dharma. And so if you live your life trying to get through it, like, I just have to make it through. I just have to make it through. Like, you're going to burn out. Like, it's just not going to work, right? And as you burn out, what happens is you have to, you're, you need some kind of relief. It's like this. D-H-A-R-M-A. -A. You, you, it's just not going to work. And the more burnt out you get, the more you need to rely on unhealthy coping mechanisms like alcohol or video gaming to like help you tolerate. Because when your soul has been like wrung dry and you're in the depths of your despair, what are you going to do to make yourself feel good? You're going to like load up Overwatch or Dota or something. Absolutely. So I think it comes with willingly and, and voluntarily accepting a, a burden, but we'll, we'll talk about that. That's how you find yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, so... I was going to say something. Yeah. So, so just about gaming. So what happens is like, then our brain. So when we feel that sort of like spiritual burnout, like where you're not doing anything in life, our brain seeks refuge wherever it can, right? You want that little tiny little dopamine surge just so you can like make yourself feel a little bit better. And that's how you end up gaming. And so I think the solution is to find your dharma because your dharma is going to be what lets you tolerate tolerate and withstand and even overcome as opposed to escape from suffering. And that's the biggest problem gamers have is that they don't willingly, like they don't know how to tolerate suffering. They don't know how to like step into things that are, that are difficult, right? To like say like, okay, I'm going to try to study as hard as I can for this test. And I have this idea that I'm a smart person. And if I don't do well on the test, that means I'm not a smart person. And that means I'm nothing. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a Smurf account and roll all over noobs because that makes me feel good about myself. Because then I can, I, I don't want to play at, at the level that I'm actually at where other people can own me. I want to, I want to like stomp on noobs all day so that I can preserve this idea that I'm a good player, right? That's, that's the psychology of the gamer. And so the solution out of that is to find your dharma. And so now like, so, so Spark was asking, you know, what's, what's your dharma? Well, so I would start with this. Um, so take a piece of paper and write down what you think is wrong with the world. And then like, what happens is most people do this and they're like, there's so much wrong with the world. And then my question to them is, okay, so like, did you do it? And then no one writes anything that are like, the problem's too big. And that's why you don't find out what your dharma is on one sheet. Yeah. Start actually write it down. You'll be amazed. You may think that I can't fit all the problems uh, all the world's problems on one sheet of paper? Of course you can't. You can't fit all the world's problems. The question is, what's going to be the first thing that you write down? What's going to be the second? What's going to be the third? What's going to be the fourth? Then you'll begin to realize what's important to you, right? Then you take a look at that piece of paper and you, you try to figure out, okay, like, what am I going to do about this? Like, can you do something about it? Like, you got to do something. Like, if you don't do something about it, who's going to do something about it? Like, let's talk about climate change. Like, you know, we each have to do our own part. Like, what are, what are the things that matter to you? And so I would say, so I think Sparked, was Sparked also asking, like, how you book a session with me? Uh, whoop, Is that him? Yeah. Whoop, okay. So I would say just start with one piece of paper and write down what you think is wrong with the world. And then ask yourself, like, what can I do about this? 
And that's, I mean, I think that's where you got to start. I think there are also other things that you can think a little bit about in terms of, you know, like, you can also think a little bit about karma. So karma is karma. But I think about, um, I think about karma as kind of being sort of your circumstances. So I think each of us is given kind of a unique circumstance in life. So I think my dharma is heavily based on my karma. So I, I, the, the crazy thing is that, you know, I, I used to think that there was, growing up, I used to think that a 4.0 GPA is better than 2.5. And there is no situation in which I would want a 2.5 GPA instead of a 4.0 GPA. Makes sense, right? Like, there's no advantage to a 2.5 GPA. Except if you're doing what I'm doing now, which is to talk to people who have 2.5 GPAs and to say, hey, I know what it's like. I've actually been there and I came out on the other side. Like I ended up not getting into medical school for a while, but then I like I put my life together and, and now I'm like relatively happy and successful. And if I can do it, you can do it. Because the truth is that I'm not amazing. I'm actually, you know, I'm above average, but I'm, I'm not really like that different from you guys, which is something that I've come to appreciate more and more. And that really, if I can do it, you can do it. And so when I look at my life, I see the karma of a 2.5 GPA. That was the circumstance that I was given. And then I had some amount of training and things like that. And then I realized that like gamers need help and I'm the guy who's around, right? So my condolences. But if you guys need help, like I'm, I'm, I'm what is, like I'm the dude who's there. So it's my karma. So my karma, like my circumstances, my playing a bunch of video games, even now I play video games. Um, and it's like, like, it's my circumstance in life to try to help you guys. And those are my circumstances, and so my dharma and my karma are related. My circumstances in life, like, if I was born 100 years ago helping people with technology addiction and, like, streamers with the stress of streaming, that dharma doesn't make any sense back then. So there are some challenges that you yourself are the only ones that can, can do something about, and that's your dharma. Uh, 